Hi, I'm Realtor Sarah Morrow with Cell State Ace Realty. Today on Property Time, I get to chat with Tom Orlando, owner and managing broker of Housing Helpers. Tom is a certified relocation specialist and a certified specialist of global mobility. Not to mention he's a total problem solver, creative strategist, lover of people, and father of six. Housing Helpers connects people with places. They serve Denver, Boulder, in between, and beyond. Tom hails from upstate New York and has owned and operated this awesome company since 2014. He fits right in here in Colorado as he loves skiing, camping, and driving any Jeep that he can find. Tom lives in Broomfield, Colorado, and he manages a fast-expanding team of 22 people. I know you're going to find his knowledge and his services useful and engaging. Hi, Tom. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you. Um, let's dive right in. So why don't you tell me a little bit about what Housing Helpers does, what services they provide, and uh, what your role is there. Okay. Well, Housing Helpers has been around since 1987. We, do, we started as a roommate matching service solely, hmm. and that quickly grew into uh, apartment locating and just unfurnished rentals locating. So owners would call us, sign up their property with us, and then we'd lease it out for the owner, and then the lease is between the owner and the tenant. we walk away. And then we started the corporate housing piece, which is furnished short-term, 30-day um, minimum stays, but average stays about 68 days, I believe. Hmm. And uh, so, yeah, we did, started doing the corporate housing piece, and we have, uh, I don't know, about 200 units, 180, 200 units. Wow. Right now, throughout the U.S., and then about, uh, I'd say it was about 2000, we started the uh, real estate division. Gotcha. And were you a property manager before that? Were you when you became, you know, the real estate side of things? Like, tell me about the transition there. We actually never did property management. Um, itself, like actual property management, mm. until about three or four years ago. So after you became a sort of real estate services company. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we, we were always asked, you know, will you manage the property? Because we're yeah. talking to all these owners and we always just said, no, we don't want to work that angle. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so we, uh, we decided to do it and it's been good since, it's been great. So. so they demanded it of you enough. Pretty much. Wore you down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I know your slogan, and I love it, is connecting people with places. Like, mm -hmm. To me, that's so great. It's kind of what us realtors do, but way more so if you're looking at a national you know, just housing crisis that we're in. And mm -hmm. You guys do that so much more than any realtor really could. Can you talk about what you love about your job? I assume you're, I mean, I know you and you're a crazy people person. <laughs> Tell me about how that slogan even came to be. Well, what I like about my job, I'll start there, is that I, I was selling real estate back in the, the crash of 2007, 2008. Okay. And we had all these other housing options for people instead of just buying and selling. Yeah. So we actually stayed quite busy. What do you mean we? The agency you were with? The housing Humpers. Oh, okay. You yeah. were with them then. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've been with them since uh, 2002, and uh, I worked in our Boulder office for 12 years. Wow. And then I bought the Denver operation, and just uh, last summer, I bought the Boulder operation. And is Housing Helpers nationwide? It's obviously in Denver and Boulder, mm -hmm. and you obviously send people all over the country with various needs mm -hmm. but like tell me more about is it a franchise sort of thing so it was founded in the boulder office the uh, tom smith is the original founder of the company he's still involved there's one other office in las vegas nevada oh um and so the only thing that's truly national is our corporate housing units we have them florida to california they're all over the place and we we have different models for out-of-state properties in Colorado, we tend to master lease the properties for long periods of time, year, two years. We've had some on Pearl Street Mall that are over 20 years wow. that we've had them. Mm -hmm. and we master lease the whole building. 
Uh, the ones out of state, we do what's called set up tear down. So we'll set it up for a guest, and then as soon as that guest moves out, we'll tear it out, tear it down, take all the furniture out, housewares, linens, TVs, mm -hmm. everything. So I've heard about some of these third party, you know, relocation specialists. Mm -hmm. that, that you know, they're their own giant company. A giant company sort of like contracts them to relocate their employees and move them around the country. Is that sort of like what you do? Or are you more just like a smaller version of that? Like talk to me about what corporate housing really looks like in your world. So those companies are typically who we work with. Um, so if a major corporation hires a relocation management company, that relocation management company's job is to find whatever their package is for that employee. But usually it's a temp housing package and then a home buying package, movers, and, and all of that. We've done that on a small scale, um, but we haven't, we're, we don't do that normally. You know, it's, that's, we rely on the relocation management companies and they send us their bid requests or, or buyers and sellers, whatever, you know. So you're more of like an executive stay, short and long term leasing company versus like a relocation mega crew. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly it. And you work in tandem with some of these third party contractors, some of these major companies. Mm -hmm. Like who are your clients? Uh, exactly what you said, the relocation management companies are, are huge for us. The companies come, some of them come direct to us, uh, especially in the Broomfield area. And so they'll, they'll contact us, you know, we've got two employees coming to town for training, they need a month to stay, mm -hmm. whatever, and we, we place them in housing. So that's interesting. So you're more of a, um, you're, like a you're like a filler in of the gaps wherever there's a need that's kind of like complicated. Like there's a mm -hmm. giant relocation guy and there's an employer and you're sort of the boots on the ground that's gonna help find, that's gonna make it happen. That's exactly it. We, we are the ones that actually have the housing. I see. So the, the company, you know, when you used to move, you'd go to HR and HR would help you with all of the, these functions that we're talking about. Well, HR didn't want to deal with that anymore in I these see. companies. So they spun it out to relocation management companies. And then they put it out. Typically, there's a, there's a few platforms out there. Uh, and there's more and more every day because that's where the market's going. Mm -hmm. But these platforms, so if uh, Bob Smith is needing to move to Boulder, Colorado, it goes on a platform and then all of the corporate housing companies bid on that platform. And I then, see. you know, sometimes it's only three to get to Bob, sometimes it's ten that gets to, gets to Bob, and then Bob picks which unit he wants. Gotcha. So it's not really an HR problem anymore. Correct. They can't really find, I mean, inventory is so low, they probably can't, like, do it all themselves. You're one of the people bidding on this need. Yep. Okay, I think I follow. Now, are you relocating families and individuals, I assume, it sounds like they're mostly employees already with a company? or just became an employee of a company. Mm -hmm. And are you moving them permanently? Is it usually a long-term 60 to 100 day lease that they need temporarily? Like, talk to me about your clientele. Everybody's different. So some, it, it depends on the package they get from their employer. Um, sometimes they're only allotted for a 30 day temp housing stay. And sometimes they can get, usually we see about 120 on a, uh, a say a family moving. But we also have some that the, the client needs a year. You know, we have a few clients in, I should call them guests, in our properties that have been there for four or five years mm -hmm. in furnished housing. Okay. And that's mostly what you do. You don't have a lot of the 30-day, even 60-day. It sounds like these are mostly long-term needs. No, most of them are short. Oh. Yeah. It's, there's a the few exceptions of the long-term ones. I see. But we, we lease them long term and then break it up. as that as that guest moves out I see. we get somebody else to go in so you're controlling a lot of properties you're not owning a ton of properties correct you have a long term lease yourselves you fill it you fill the vacancies with short term needs and then that bidding is sort of you look at what's available for space and you look at the people that might need it exactly okay yep. i think i follow i think i follow and most of those are short term which are 30 60 90 mm -hmm. 120 180 like 
Yep. And, and a lot of times too, so the relocation management company, we know that that employee is approved for 120 day stay. Well, they only allow us to sign 30 day leases with a 30 day notice to vacate. Oh, got it. So we don't always know our availability, but got it. So it's 30 days and then 30 days right. and then 30 days mm -hmm. and you're guessing sort of when they, when they're going to go. Yeah. And we have notes in our systems basically saying approved for 120 to this date. Yeah. Okay, cool. You talked about your team. Um, it sounds like you own, you own most of the company, at least the Colorado division of this company. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about how many people work for you? What are they licensed realtors? Are they property managers? Um, how many of you are there and who is your client really? I'm still not clear on that. <laughs> so the client is the relocation management companies, the platforms, and then mom and pop, we get a lot of direct calls and businesses that are in the area mm. that are hiring people and bringing them in. I see. Uh, a lot of them just know of us, and so they call us direct instead of going through all those different platforms and everything else. So your client is an individual, a company, and any channel in between. You, you really mm -hmm. serve a whole bunch of different people yeah. who are helping with that one need of the, of the final client or yeah. the end user, if you will. Just like you as a, a realtor, you know, if a company contacts you because of an employee, you're going to go and tour that, that person. Sure. And, you know, just from your sphere, you probably have other people as well. So, gotcha. yeah, it's, it's housing. So it's not specific to a corporation. It's, mm. it's specific to people. Sure, that yeah. will be actually living in there, right. and you hear about their needs maybe through their company. Yeah, initially anyway. <laughs> okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so it's kind of like a lead source, really. These third parties, these mm -hmm. employers, they lead you to the person who's actually going to be living in the space. Yeah, and a lot of times we only interact with the platform or the third party, and we, we don't even know who lives there other than their name. Sure, okay. And other times it's just the individual that sort of skips all those other, right. other channels. Right. Sorry, I asked about your team and then we and then we diverged because I asked two questions. Can you talk about your, your team that works for yeah, you? So we have 15, we are hiring because uh, <laughs> I need a few people. <laughs> we have 15 people now and I'm guessing by the end of 2023, we'll probably be 20, 22 people. 22 people, it's a pretty big crew. It's, it's, we just bought a new office, we moved in there, we set it up for having more people. <laughs> you know. So you want to grow. Yeah. You guys are expanding. Yeah. Especially after I bought Boulder, that was the whole plan. I see. You know. And you think Boulder's gonna be like the headquarters long term for this? We'll always be in Boulder, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I bought the building. I didn't want to uh, keep leasing. I see. So that makes sense. We're, we're permanent. So are you considered, um, I know you're one of the leaders in this sort of relocation conversation and I know short-term rentals is a really hot topic. Like, what is your title? I mean, you're an owner, you're a licensed realtor. What is a day like for you and what would you call yourself? <laughs> you know, to be honest, I would say my day is mostly filled with taking care of my employees. I'm big on just touching base with them, making sure that they're happy and doing what they want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, You're the boss man. I'm, I'm the boss man, but I don't act like it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, so I know that. <laughs> well, um, one more question. So, like, we touched on this, but, like, small businesses, major corporations, mega corporations, like, what are the majority of your clients doing for jobs? And is this... Like, are they really just temporarily staying somewhere and then going back home? Uh, a lot of them are temporarily is... staying and uh, until they find something to buy. I see. You know, so we have, we don't, we don't always know who's buying and who's staying and who's going and, gotcha. and whatnot, but a lot of times there is a lot of opportunity to talk to those clients and guests and help them with their next transition. And it could be that... Travel nurses, for example, we have a lot of travel nurses, and well, they're never going home for the most part. You know, mm -hmm. they're always going to a different city. Mm -hmm. So we have some that have worked with us here in Denver, Boulder. That, oh, where are you going next? You know, and oh, okay, well, we're going to 
Texas, and so we help them find temp housing in Texas. Okay, so you're very useful for that person because they're just sort of nomading, and you're just constantly helping them with the next stop. Yep. Yep. Now, as a realtor, one of the things that we struggle with is like timing, right? Like, what are the chances that the stars are going to align that I close on one property and like that same day or week, you know? their new home is all ready to go. Like we know that that's not as common as we would like it to be in a market like this. So give me an example of like a complicated temporary housing situation that maybe you're just sort of filling in the gap and being the catch on. I mean, where do people go if it really is just like a couple weeks or if it is a couple months? We just actually had that happen where it was a couple and they were they sold their home in Texas mm -hmm. and they were building new construction here in Colorado in Broomfield. And so I told them the best thing to do is when you move, put your stuff in pots. That way you don't have to move it into storage mm -hmm. and then back into a truck and back into a new house. It eliminates like that one step. That's correct. And so they, they pay storage for that, which a client's going to pay that anyway. Right. And then they move into furnished housing for, we have to do 30 day minimum leases. Right. So however long they need, if they need two weeks, we still do a month. Sure. Right? We have to by law. Sure. And that usually cushions them nicely. Like in my experience, they're glad to have 30 days to move twice right. versus 14. Exactly. <laughs> they're busy exactly. Got kids. Um, so you're saying a lot of times they could be coming from anywhere and your solution often isn't even necessarily their new home. It's a temp house, it's furnished, and it's a pod. Mm -hmm. Because that's the way to kind of reduce the amount of work. Yeah, even for long-term unfurnished renters, same scenario. Mm -hmm. You know, that house that they really like might not be available yet, so we always right. have temp housing. And we have a lot of realtors that, you know, they're, they know of us and they have that exact scenario you were just oh, talking about. Oh, I love about. that. I mean, when the home is promised to be done in March and it's completed in June, right? what do you do? Yeah. You know, you told them to sell in March. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, ah, uh, home was... I had one house that we, the, the woman I was working with was under contract with new construction. They hadn't even broke ground yet on the house, but she had to list her house within 30 days right. of the contract. Right. And then like, you factor <laughs> in the qualifying expiration for the loan and you factor in like just the shortage of homes and the materials. That, I mean, yeah. sometimes they won't even close on a house over like an oven uh -huh. and everything else is done. Uh -huh. you're like, Please let my people in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had one that was uh, the stoop in the backyard. Not it wasn't done. poured and uh, they safe. couldn't get the certificate of occupancy. <laughs> Man. Well, I don't have any other questions. I think what you do is awesome. I think you really help us, you know, fill in the gaps both as realtors and as clients and as employees. I mean, there's nothing more exciting for someone than getting a new job in a new city that they really want to be in, mm -hmm. but where are they going to live? You know, it's getting harder and harder. And I really appreciate just the creative solutions that your team provides and the, you know, the forward thinking, you know, because it's not just about single family home sales anymore. There's a lot more we need oh, to yeah. we need to get into it to solve this. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, new cranes every day with new apartments, and you know, we also we, we handle apartments, but we also have single family homes mm -hmm. and townhouses and everything else. So we, whatever that family or person needs, we usually can accommodate it. It's amazing. Now, is that the last question I have for you? Is like, let's say I want to, I want to relocate to a certain place. Like, I want to move to Michigan. Mm -hmm. You know, do you do you just sort of say no? I'll refer this out if you have no properties in that area, or like, how do you deal with the fifty states for ten thousand? We for anything, yeah. We find them. <clears throat> we find them and we furnish them. We set them up. I see. Everything. I see. So you go after a place that you find for a long term lease, and then you'll sublet it. We typically get short-term leases out of state. Okay. So if the, the back to the 100 day, 120 day approval, yeah, we'll take a lease out for that 120. Okay. And factor in, you know, lease break fees and, sure. and stuff like that. I see. So even though yours doesn't necessarily need to be longer than the need, it just sort of you're the controller, and then it is still sublet. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, I think that's brilliant. I think that's really a wonderful compromise to 
some of this short-term rental um, restriction stuff that's changing every month, and it's nice mm -hmm. to know that there's a professional who knows the legislation and the municipalities, and you're going to sort of do that red tape work for us. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> 30 days is, is the key. You yeah. Know, and, and we don't get the complaints that traditional short-term rentals under 30 days, because those are weekend party houses that sure. you hear about and sure. everything else. So Yeah, that's really what they're cracking down on, I think. Yeah. Well, Tom, you've been a wealth of knowledge. I super appreciate your time Cheers. and your expertise. <laughs> That's the proper team. <laughs>